You are a Locked On Braves postcast, part of Locked On Sports Atlanta, your team every day. A memorable night of baseball and the home opener for the Atlanta Braves for 2024. A comeback victory in 10 innings, 6-5 over the Arizona Diamondbacks. That's the good news. The bad news, though, is a possible injury to one of Atlanta's most important players, and that man's name is Spencer Strider. We're going to get into all of it here on the Braves postcast. As always, Grant McCauley here with Jake Mastriani and the Braves postcast part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. Leave us those likes and comments and share the show. Be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Locked On Sports Atlanta is where you can find every episode in video form. And make sure to subscribe to Locked On Braves for the audio version of the podcast. We got you covered on all those platforms. Today's episode brought to you by Prize Picks. Download the app today. Use the code Locked On MLB for a first deposit match of up to $100. That's promo code Locked On MLB in the Prize Picks app. Jake, the great thing that happened for the Atlanta Braves was they had one of those patented comebacks. Six, five, and 10 innings. Travis Darno delivering the big hit that sends the Braves home winners. The bad news, though, that's kind of tempered by a possible injury to Spencer Strider, who was dealing with some elbow discomfort. And now I guess we just kind of collectively have to hold our breaths as the Braves are waiting to see exactly what the extent of that will be. Yeah, it's all speculation at this point, but obviously anytime you hear something about the elbow, uh, you know, it's never, never a great feeling when that happens, especially with the outing that Spencer Strider had, just didn't have that command, was losing the velocity late, was sitting more 95, was still really good for most pitchers. But uh, yeah, and you know, until we get more information, really kind of hard to guess, but that's why the Braves went out and got a Chris Sale and somebody like that to try to deepen that rotation. And, and hopefully it is nothing major and he's able to come back, but Braves, as you mentioned, do what they do best, especially at home on home openers. They get the yeah. walk-off win, and Travis Darno, what an bat it was for him, and what a win for the Atlanta Braves. Yeah, it certainly was. I mean, they overcame what was early on looking like a night where they just weren't going to have the kind of luck that the Arizona Diamondbacks were having because in addition to kind of a, a rough time for Spencer Strider, as you mentioned, Jake, with the command, the velocity not there as the start went on. I mean, he wasn't sharp, but dealing with elbow discomfort might explain a little bit of that. But for the Braves, it seemed like they were gonna just, just going to hit atom balls all night long and just not have the opportunity to get those big hits. But that changed in the 8th, ninth, and ultimately the 10th inning as the Braves got a little bit of everything. They hit the ball hard some. They placed the ball well some as well. Jared Kelnick, how about the first hit at Truist Park as an Atlanta Brave for him? It was hit 80 miles an hour. It dropped into shallow left field. Again, it's not how hard you hit it. It's where you hit it that can oftentimes count. The Diamondbacks had a lot of that on their side, especially against Strider early in this game. Good to see the Braves get a little bit of their own late. I tweeted it out going into the eighth inning. The Diamondbacks had five hits on balls hit 73 miles per hour or less. And while the Braves had five outs on balls hit 100 miles per hour or harder. So it was some of that bad luck for the Braves. So glad to see some of that go the Braves way with that that hit for Kelnick. And I believe this is the third time now he's come in off the bench and he has got on base every mm -hmm. single time. The hit in Sunday against the Phillies had the walk the other day in Chicago and comes in here now and gets a big hit. So, I mean, he has come up ready uh, at the plate and delivered in some big spots already for the Braves and a home opener for him. His first time playing in front of this Braves crowd. I'm sure that feels great for him. I'm yeah. sure he's hoping to get some better hits, uh, some better contact than that. But hey, works out for the Atlanta Braves, and glad to see him get off to that good start in front of the home crowd. Now, what's the old saying? It's a line drive in the box mm -hmm. score. That's most certainly true. You mentioned those uh, not-so-hard-hit balls to the Arizona Diamondbacks, the hard-hit outs for the Atlanta Braves. Adam Duvall hit one 107 miles an hour early in the game that had an expected batting average of near 900. The expected batting average for Jared Kelnick's 80-mile-an-hour rocket, bottle rocket that fell into shallow left field uh, between Guriel and Alexander, who were going out to try to corral it, was a 0 10 expected batting average. In other words, that should be an out 99% of the time, but we saw the 1% that it's not, and the Braves will certainly take that. Kelnick will as well. And you're right, he just continues to find his way on base. He has had some multi hit games when he started. He has also come off the bench with some doubles, some walks, and you know, found a way to contribute. And it's the, the timeshare in left field is something that I think could work out pretty well for the Braves, not because they don't have the belief in Jared Kelnick, but when you do have a lefty starting, you have the opportunity to throw Adam Duvall in there. He hit one hard, didn't get out of the ballpark, would have been out of three parks, actually. That's also true of Duvall's earlier hit. But woulda, coulda, shoulda, doesn't matter. And Jared Kelnick did find his way into the game at the most important and pivotal time for the Braves in order to help them to ultimately tie it up, 
send it to extras. And once there, Travis Darno, a man who has just continued to find his way into the lineup for the Braves, forced into some regular action now with Sean Murphy on the shelf. He just finds himself in the middle of big moments, and he comes through an awful lot for this team. I asked Brian Snicker before the game just to talk a little bit about the value of Travis Darno to this club, and he said in one word, he is irreplaceable for the Atlanta Braves. I mean, he he is, and the guy like Sean Murphy goes out, who I think has the ability to be the best catcher in baseball. I think he has yeah. that type of potential, sure. both what he does at the plate and behind it. But then you bring in a guy like Travis Darno, who's just the veteran. He calls a great game, doesn't have the arm nearly as Travis or as Sean Murphy, but you know, did throw Nicky Lopez out the other day. But what he just gives you in, in presence, I liked what they were talking about after the game. And Peter Morland was talking about Travis fell behind quickly in that at bat. And you know, all of a sudden you was thinking, okay, he's up against it. He just stays calm. He stays in the at bat, comes away with a really good swing. And we we talk about exit velocity and balls that should have left the yard. That would have been gone in 25 of 30 parks, but yep. wasn't out on this night. And one thing we always have to keep in mind early in the year, balls travel better during the summer months. We see that all the time with some of these balls that don't leave early in the season that are going to be way gone uh, once things warm up a little bit. It got a little chilly there late on Friday night. But Travis Darno, I mean, to be able to plug in somebody like that who – you know, is just going to have, you know, calm nerve to him up there. He's just going to be steady behind the plate, call a good game. Pitchers like throwing to him. It's a really nice luxury to have for the Braves. Yeah, and he's been a part of some really great things since coming over to Atlanta beginning in 2020. He caught every single inning of their postseason run in 2021, and that was after a season in which he missed a significant amount of time, and the Braves were scrambling to find answers behind the plate. They tried out half a dozen catchers while Travis Darno was on the injured list. So that just lets you know, irreplaceable, indispensable, whatever you want to call it, Travis Darno has been integral to what the Braves have done in winning the National League East and the World Series and you know, doing things that they want to be doing every year, winning a lot of ball games. and Travis Darno has found himself in the midst of all of that. There were plenty of late heroics, though. How about the game for Matt Olson? He came through early home run, late double. An error got everything started in that big rally as Austin Riley found his way on base. And the Braves finally were able to string those hits together. And this is something that you and I have talked about an awful lot in the two years that we've done the postcast and predates our show. It goes all the way back into pretty much the time that Brian Snitker took over. You just can't count out the Atlanta Braves late in games. They will find ways, opening day, home opener, whatever the case is, to win some baseball games if you give them an opportunity. And the Diamondbacks, well, they left the door cracked. They did. And you can't do that with this offense. And there were other times earlier in the game, you know, Marte had a ball that he mishandled at second base that loaded things up that I thought was going to be that chance for the Braves to break through. But you just cannot continue to give this offense chances like that. They're eventually going to come through with that big hit as they did in this one and the play by the young shortstop not being able to handle that. It's a tough hop. It looked like maybe it went off the lip of the grass and just kind of bounced up on them right there. But either way, went the Braves way. And they made him pay for it. What a hit by Matt Olson. We keep talking about these baseballs that should have left the yard. That one would have been out in five of 30 parks and was absolutely destroyed as well. First pitch, too, you know, after that just happened and he is ready for that and drive it the other way. Uh, just, I mean, Matt Olson, the home run that he had tonight, too, 105.1 uh, miles per hour off the bat, absolutely destroyed. I mean, he looks really, really good and faced the lefty starter tonight too maybe not one that's overpowering but certainly one that had Braves hitters a little off balance as he had some good location and command as well uh, but just the year that Matt Olson's coming off of to get off to another hot start this year it's just fantastic to see yeah I mean you just expect Matt Olson to be right there in the middle of things 424 foot homer early on nearly had a second homer late as you pointed out and hopefully as the weather heats up we'll see this Braves lineup start to turn a lot of these doubles and well I guess Darno's was a single technically but they'll start to turn some of these into home runs. We expect that from this offense. As we continue here on the Braves postcast, we'll talk a lot about some more of the Braves' big offensive heroics of the night, how they finally were able to break through. And unfortunately, we'll have to continue to talk and, and perhaps speculate a little bit about what's going on with Spencer Strider. The news, of course, after the game, Brian Snitker saying that an MRI for the Braves' right-hander is going to be happening on Saturday. We'll talk about all of that and much more as the Braves postcast continues. Eat stress-free this spring with Factor's delicious, ready-to-eat meals. Every fresh, never-frozen meal is chef-crafted, dietitian approved and ready to eat in just two minutes. Choose from a weekly menu of 35 options, including popular options like Calorie Smart, Keto, Protein Plus, Vegan, and Veggie. Also, discover more than 60 add-ons every week, breakfast, on-the-go lunch, snacks, and beverages to help you stay fueled and feel good all day long. 
What are you waiting for? Get started today. Fuel up for your springtime goals. Head to factormeals.com slash locked on MLB 50. Use the code locked on MLB 50. You'll get 50% off your first box and 20% off your next box. That is code locked on MLB 50 at factormeals.com slash locked on MLB 50. Get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next box while your subscription is active. Prize Picks is America's number one fantasy sports app with more than 3 million members. It is the easiest and most exciting way to get in on the action while you watch your favorite sports and players. Spring training is over. Baseball season is officially underway. Don't miss your chance to add your favorite players uh, from the diamond to your prize picks entries. I like that from the diamond. I've heard that somewhere before. Whether it's strikeouts, RBIs, or first inning runs, take your pick of more or less. Add them to your prize picks entry today. Download the app and use the code Locked On MLB for a first deposit match of up to one hundred dollars. That's Locked On MLB on the Prize Picks app. Well, the Braves had some good and some bad in this one. The opener of their three-game weekend set against the Arizona Diamondbacks. The first game at Truist Park, a sellout crowd here to see it as the Braves come back and win in 10 innings by a 6-5 to five score. Let's talk about the line score of this one. Six runs, nine hits, couple of errors. Excuse me, five runs, nine hits, couple of errors for the Diamondbacks in the losing effort. Six runs on 12 hits for the Braves. Jake, you talked about it. They had plenty of options or opportunities, I should say, throughout the course of the game. You just wondered when the big hits were going to show up. As it happened, one run in the eighth, two in the ninth, one in the tenth, and they turned a 5-2 deficit into a 6-5 win in 10 innings. Pierce Johnson, the winning pitcher, now 2-0, and the loss goes to McGuff. He is now 0-2 on the season as the Braves are able to come back against the Arizona bullpen. They didn't have a whole lot of luck. Uh, against Tommy Henry, who was on the mound to start this game. The lefty just had the Braves offense just enough off balance, I felt like. It certainly wasn't dominating, uh, but he also got a friendly call that helped him out a bit against Ronald Acuna Jr. in the fourth inning with the bases loaded. It felt like between that and all the balls that were not leaving the yard and somehow being corralled by Arizona defenders, it was just going to be one of those nights for the Atlanta Braves. And as it turned out, offensively speaking, it ended up being the opposite by the time all was said and done. It did feel like one of those nights, though. I mean, as much as confidence as I have in this Braves team to continually come back and push through, it just felt like everything was going against them. Every hard hit ball was right at somebody. Meanwhile, every ball they put in play seemed like was finding a hole. And it felt like that for seven and a half innings until the Braves started to have some things go their way. But I think you got to give a lot of credit to Tommy Henry. I mean, coming into this matchup, I thought this was a pitcher the Braves were absolutely going to blast off on and look they had a lot of hard hits against them but I mean he's a lefty he's not a hard throwing lefty he's hasn't had a good track record at the big league so far this felt like a pitcher that the Braves offense could really feast on but I thought he did a good job mixing up his pitches I mean he threw five different pitches more than 13 13 percent of the time or more so he did keep the Braves hitters off balance he went that low velocity thought his changeup looked really good he got four whiffs on 12 swings against that changeup. So I thought it was you know, a really good performance by him. Maybe a little bit of help from the umpire on that ball, ball to Ronald Acuna as well. Absolutely. And a big spot there that you just, you, it's one another one of those, like the one for Max Fried. You just, those are ones you can't miss. And there are ones that just make me say, why do we not have the challenge system right now? And that spot right there, it just can't happen. But either way, Braves able to prevail. And again, Still a really good start, I thought, from Tommy Henry, who made some good pitches in big spots. Yeah, he did. And with the Braves, and you look at this, and we'll talk a little bit more about how this series will unfold with the probable pitchers here, but you felt you know, pretty good having Spencer Strider, Max Fried, and Chris Sale lined up in a series in which you are not going to see Zach Gallon. The Diamondbacks could have thrown him in the finale or not going to skip anyone to get back to him. At least that's the plan as of coming into the series. You're not going to see Merrill Kelly. You're also not going to see Jordan Montgomery because he's not quite gassed up and ready to go. And uh, what is it? Eduardo Rodriguez is also on the injured list. So those are four big starters. It could be big proponents of Arizona's success this year. The Braves are not seeing in this series while being able to throw what they would align, I think, is their top three starters in some order, any which way you slice it. And Spencer Strider would be at the head of that. So uh, let's go back and talk a little bit more about Spencer Strider's start. Four innings. He allowed five earned runs, seven hits, three walks, four and four strikeouts, a home run allowed as well. This just did not look like Spencer Strider in terms of, you know, how sharp he was. And typically he's able to use that fastball slider combo to just great result. He had a slider that was left over the plate and gave up that home run to start the game to tell Marte. And it just felt like it was all kind of downhill from there. He couldn't locate, couldn't get down in the zone with the breaking ball. And the fastball did not have the usual 97s and 98s that you'll see 
you know, we know Spencer Strider can hit triple digits. We've seen that in the past, but he doesn't have to live there. But when you're down two, three miles an hour on that average velocity, you do start to kind of wonder, was something going on? And we found out after the game from Brian Snitker uh, with some prompting from Braves PR to make sure somebody asked about it because the excitement of the game had kind of taken over and rewritten the story at that point. And I don't blame anybody. Uh, Spencer Strider having to get an MRI on Saturday, that was a footnote in the tonight's game story that nobody was anticipating and has Braves fans, I'm sure, waiting eagerly to find out what the news is going to be regarding their ace. As we know, injuries have changed the Braves' plans and rotation quite a few times in recent years. Yeah, we know the Braves are secretive about things. There, That wasn't coming out unless somebody prompted it to. You could hear the Braves PR guy saying, anybody want to ask about Spencer after the game? And it, it caught everybody yeah. off guard there. Um, but, yeah, I mean, terrible news like we talked about at the Open there. And it makes it really hard to even evaluate this start. But still, if you dive into it, 85.9 mile per hour average X velocity against, it's not like he got – absolutely lit up in this start i know the slider you mentioned that he left out to Marte, and certainly you know didn't have as good location but you know overall he just had some some tough ball you know tough batted balls go uh, against him in this one i thought it was also again give a lot of credit to the diamondbacks hitters i thought they did a great job laying off those sliders off the plate they were not chasing those like we're we typically see teams do now he still got six whiffs on 13 swings against it right but you just didn't see them going after it too much it's like they were just looking for the fastball, staying with that. And the velocity was down on that fastball, and he didn't have quite the location of it. So it makes it a lot more difficult. So, again, it's really tough to even kind of evaluate how he was in this start. Right now, it's really just hoping that it's nothing major in the forearm. But anytime you hear forearm injuries, obviously, it's going to make you a little nervous. I will have to wait and see what comes out after that and see what the race plan is. I have to imagine, though, Grant, I mean, even if it's nothing major, he's probably going to miss some time with this to allow things to kind of calm down and heal up. So we'll see who takes his place. But again, hopefully hoping for the best here with this MRI coming up. Yeah, I just want to stress if, if for the semantics of it all, it was not necessarily forearm discomfort that he complained about. It was straight up elbow discomfort when he left the game. So you know, take that, you know, six in one hand, half a dozen in the other. Either way, it's disconcerting news. And obviously, Spencer Strider, who has been through Tommy John surgery already in his career, understands, you know, when you're in a situation where you're having that kind of discomfort, that you do want to get to the bottom of it and you want to get an answer to it. But you're right. It could end up being an injured list in either way. Again, we'll find out more information as the weekend rolls on, but it's not the kind of news you want to hear. As you look at what the Braves have done in their rotation, I mean, they have Max Fried going on Saturday. He's going to have far better starts over the course of this year than he did on opening day. We've talked about that at length, and we'll get into it a little bit more later. But you mentioned, Jake, bringing over Chris Sale, the return of Charlie Morton, how good he looked, Reynaldo Lopez stepping into rotation. And as you and I talked about on Lockdown Braves, and we talked about uh, over the course of early in this season, we haven't heard the last of the Bryce Elders and other options that are around for the Braves because at some point you typically need those guys. And whether or not they are going to need one of those guys to come up sooner than later, just like they did a year ago, we're going to find out very soon. But there are options and there is quality depth for the Atlanta Braves in the minor leagues. You just hate to have to call on it, particularly if it means you're going to be without Spencer Strider for any length of time. Yeah, you never want to call on it, especially, you know, this early in the season. You want to kind of get on a roll. But again, if it is nothing major, you you probably do want it to happen at this point in the season and get it taken care of and get these guys ready for the second half and hopefully the postseason. But you're right. There is depth there. You know, I know a lot of Braves fans were upset, uh, maybe a little puzzled. The fact that an all-star in Bryce Elder just was pushed out of the rotation this year. And I know I had a lot of fans in my comments asking about that. And I responded to all of them saying, you'll see plenty of Bryce Elder this season, and that could definitely be the case if we see Strider have to miss any length of time. I know A.J. smith Shaver started on Friday night. Ed Gwinnett wasn't a particularly great start for him, and the Braves only planned for him to throw a couple innings in that one anyway. Um, but again, don't want to speculate at this point, but there are solid options down there, including an all-star from last year in Bryce Elder. Yeah, a lot of teams would like to have those kinds of options to call upon, and the Braves are fortunate to have a Bryce Elder should they need him. Let's talk a little bit about the Braves' offense and how this game you know, turned into their favor. The offense unable to break through until late when, again, a run in the eighth got them close. It seemed like that 5-2 to two score or the Diamondbacks' advantage just kept getting a little bit bigger and a little bit bigger as the game wore on. The Braves would get a little bit closer. Arizona would find an answer. But the Braves finally scored one in the eighth the two in the ninth, and then one in the 10th in walk-off fashion. Travis Darno 
with the honors there. I t- touched on this earlier, and you mentioned, I mean, I would love to see the Major League Baseball get serious about the strike zone in terms of bringing in that challenge system because what happened to Ronald Acuna Jr. should not be a thing that happens, a pitch that never had the plate, and that's the reigning National League MVP. I love the tweet from Bally Sports South. We're getting salty on social media about this stuff. The reigning MVP just got called out on what pitch? It just it can't happen that way. But Ronald getting in on the action a little bit later with a run scoring double himself looking pretty good there. Matt Olson, the monster home run, a double, a couple of runs knocked in for him. Two more hits for Marcelo Zuna, who had two home runs against the White Sox in the Braves' most recent game. And then Jared Kelnick coming through. It's not how hard you hit it, it's where you hit it with his double to tie things up. A very nice uh, hi and welcome to Truist Park for the new Atlanta Brave before Travis Darno got in on things. And you know, this is what it's going to take and what it's going to be, Jake, I think, all season long. It's going to be different guys at different times on different nights, and that's what makes this Braves lineup so dangerous. It does. I love the bat by, by Ronald, so I want to talk about that for just a second. I mean, the call he had on him, you know he's frustrated. You know, look, it's been a two- or three-game, like, mini slump, if you want to call it that, for Ronald here at the beginning of the year. But, you know, to have the bat kind of taken out of his hand in a big moment like that, for him to then come back and shoot a ball the other way like he did, I thought that was really, really big for Ronald, not that he necessarily needs a confidence boost being the reigning NL MVP, but I'm sure that felt really good to be able to contribute like that. And you look at this lineup at the end of the day, every single starter in this game had at least one hard hit ball. I mean, it's just what they do. They continually put the ball in play. They continue to hit the ball hard. And eventually when you do that enough, good things are going to happen. That you do, and the Braves have proven that time after time, especially in 2023, is the best offense in Major League Baseball. And you expect this group to be up to those same kind of things here in 2024. When we continue, we will turn the page and look at game two of the series as the Braves and Diamondbacks continue over the course of the weekend. Max Freed is second start of the year. How is that going to stack up against an Arizona team that's already shown that they are going to be, I think, a force to be reckoned with by the time all is said and done in that playoff picture comes into focus later this year? That is next as the Braves postcast continues. Did you know that even if you have a 401k for retirement, that you can still have an IRA? Robinhood is the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar you contribute when you subscribe to Robinhood Gold. But get this, now through April 30th, Robinhood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer in from other retirement accounts with a 3% match. That's right, no cap on the 3% match as well. Robinhood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to their IRA with a 3% match. This offer is good through April 30th. Get started at Robinhood.com slash boost. Subscription fees apply. And now for some legal info, claim as of Q1 2024 validated by Radius Global Market Research. All right, Jake, let's talk a little bit about game two of this series. The Braves will look to secure a series victory over the Arizona Diamondbacks after their extra inning victory in game one. And they have the rotation lined up the way that they would want it in this series. Clearly, the first contest for Spencer Strider did not go the way that they wanted to. Max Fried, in a different kind of way, had an opening day, or excuse me, a first start of the year in the opening series against the Phillies that did not last nearly as long as he wanted it to thanks to, in large parts, or in no small part, one very bad missed call. Be that as it may, Freed will be looking to last much longer here against Arizona in his first start at Truist Park of the year. It's game two. It's Max Freed against Brandon Font of the Arizona Diamondbacks. Should be an interesting pitching matchup with the veteran, a guy who's expected to be a huge part of Atlanta's success this year, and one of the younger pitchers just trying to kind of prove himself in the up-and-coming Arizona Diamondbacks rotation. Yeah, and he had a great postseason for the Diamondbacks last year. Really helped him on that run to the World Series. So uh, we'll see whatever what he can bring from that to this year. As for Max Freed, I'm hoping we get Mad Max on Saturday. He's had to stew on that start for a week now. So you know he's eager to get back out there, put together a good start. And I'm hoping that he's able to do that. And the Braves need him to do that. Because uh, I want to go back and talk about Friday night's game for a minute because we didn't touch on it too much, the bullpen for the Atlanta Braves and the job that they did covering six innings in that game, allowing just two hits. They only allowed two hard hit balls over six innings and obviously no earned runs. The job Pierce Johnson did in the 10th inning, not allowing that Manfred runner to score. Just an unbelievable job by the bullpen, but they had to use a lot of guys in that one. So it's going to be very key for Max Fried in this one to be able to give the Braves some length. I mean, they it is a deep bullpen. They still got a couple of guys left in there, but they even had to use, you know, their closer, Rysel Iglesias, just because he hasn't pitched 
in so long. So that's one key, I think, for Freed in this one. You know, he's been been thinking about that last start for a week now. You know he's going to be ready to go, and the Braves need him and need to give them some length. It's a very good Diamondbacks lineup. Yeah, let's give some love to the Braves bullpen and what they did. You're absolutely right with those six innings, the first two of which belong to who else but Jesse <laughs> Chavez with two scoreless frames. Joe Jimenez, uh, Aaron Bummer, good to see him with a scoreless outing. Then Rysel Iglesias and Pierce Johnson to close it out. Some good news in all of that, in addition to how well they pitched, is that the Braves did not have a game on Wednesday. They did not have a game on Thursday either. So the bullpen was pretty much gassed up and ready to go, which is a great thing anytime you can kind of stack some time off to reset that group. So everyone should pretty much be available, even if they're throwing on back-to-back days. But You'd like to not have to use five or six relievers, that's for sure. And a great start from Max Fried, whether it's five, six, seven innings, just giving the Braves the opportunity to win and letting this offense do what it can do would go a long way towards giving the Braves the recipe for success. Freed, no record, a 40-50 ERA. I don't think you're going to see that too often from Max. Brandon Fott is 1-0, a 180 mark. He allowed just one run over five innings against the Colorado Rockies in his season debut. Six strikeouts, no walks for him as well. So a very nice outing for the Arizona right-hander who will be looking to help his club even up this series as they felt like perhaps they had the you know the win right in, the, in, in their clutches and the Braves were able to pull it away on Friday night, but that, as we have discussed many times, is what the Braves are capable of doing. Freed, pretty unlucky against the Phillies, Jake, and like you said, he spent a long time, a a full week, uh, pretty much having to stew on all of this, getting back out there and doing the kinds of things that he has done for the Braves over the course of joining the rotation since 2019. That's the Max Freed I'm expecting. You're looking for Mad Max. I call it Maximum Freed. Either way, I hope we both get what we want. Yeah, and the one thing to look for with Max, because obviously in that first outing, he didn't have great command and was really struggling to find it, even though he should have been out of that inning, but we'll we'll leave that alone. But <laughs> he just you know didn't have great feel for his pitches, so that's something to look for with Max early on. Is he able to get that command going early? If he does, I mean, I think he's going to have a great outing. When Max is on and he's able to locate – all of his pitches, like we know that he can, he's he's really tough to hit. He's somebody that can keep hitters off balance. Another thing in that first start, too, he was throwing much harder than yeah. we're typical of seeing Max Freed throw. I don't know if that was a case of, of overthrowing or he didn't have a lot of feel. I mean, a lot of pitchers early on here, we've seen the velocity down for them as the season began. And for Max, it was way up. So not sure what was going on with that. And that'll be another key to watching this one to see if that velocity is still way up there, if it's kind of back more to his normal levels. Yeah, I don't know if it shouldn't be a juice gun. You wouldn't think at a major league ballpark that can happen a lot in those spring training parks. I, I worked in those leagues, and every once in a while, those aren't quite right. But Max Freed, I know he did say in spring training while I was down there, he feels the strongest that he has in quite some time. I mean, I know best shape of your life. Haha, that's a spring training thing. But he spent a lot of time, he said, working on his diet, working on his physicality because he wanted to build himself up to be strong and ready to get through this entire season to help the Braves do what they need to do this year. So, a good start for Max Freed on Saturday would go a long way towards getting him on track. He can also help the Braves win a series against the Arizona Diamondbacks. Seven twenty first pitch, Max Freed, Brandon Font at Truist Park as the Braves look to make it back-to-back wins against the National League champion Arizona Diamondbacks. That's going to bring us to the end of this edition of the Braves postcast. As always, we appreciate you riding along with us, as you always do. Make sure you subscribe to Locked On Sports Atlanta right here on YouTube. Click that bell. You get notified every time we drop a new edition of the postcast. And make sure you subscribe to Locked On Braves wherever you get your podcast. You'll get the audio version of the postcast and all the great stuff Jake has coming at you all season long as well. Once again, the Braves with a 6-5 win in 10 innings over the Arizona Diamondbacks. For Jake Mastriani, I'm Grant McCauley. We will catch you next time. And until then, so long, everyone.